So today I'm going to rebuild my first full stack project. In my last video, I recovered my first full stack project from an old hard disk. If you haven't watched that video, go watch it. And many videos ago, I created a startup which enables me to create projects very fast. Knowing the goal of this video, let's get on to the game plan. Step, Step one, 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 one. Plan out the project with the different pages that it should include and the functionalities. Step, Step two, 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 two. Clone my boilerplate project and set up the front end and the back end. This will also include creating the GitHub repos for the project. Step, step three, 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 set up the database. This will also include how I should structure different entries. Step four will be to implement all the things we found out in step one. So without further ado, let's get right to it. So now I'll walk you through step one, where I will first show you the design I came up with. It's just a simple mockup that we can use to build from. So let's go into Figma. So here I have the design. If we look at the first page, this will be the landing page. And uh, on this page, we will have an initial random movie playing in the background. And uh, that is indicated with the gray background as we see right here. Then we will have the title. Then we have the play button, which will full screen the movie uh, from the page. And then the learn more, which will bring us to the specific page for that movie. So here we have the movies page and on the movies page you should be able to see a list of all the movies which is available and uh, there should be a poster of the movie and the name included and when you hover on a single movie it should show you the name and the IMDb rating and maybe also the description so that is the idea for the movies page. Moving on we can look at the specific movie page so if we press one of these movies we will get sent to this page and this page will have the movie poster blurred as the background image as you saw in the example in last video then we will have the name the IMDb rating and the description as well then we would also have the poster in full size right here and we would have a play button moving on we will go to the last page which is the movie recommender page and on this page when you go to this you will get shown three random movies and the each of the trailer will be playing as indicated right here and you'll be able to press the play button and it will go to that specific movies page Related to these movies and the images and everything, we need to decide how we want to store the data. But we'll do that when we set up the database. So now that we have all the Figma drawings, we can move on to cloning the project and setting up the GitHub repositories. I have already created two GitHub repositories. We just need to push some of our files. So first I will go in to my terminal right here and then I will clone my boilerplate project, one for the client and one for the server. And then I will push these to the new GitHub repositories. So as you can see right here, I have a clone command which clones my fast forward dev client repository and then puts it into the home streamer client folder just like that and then i can do the same for the server like that so inside the documentation of my boilerplate project i have this list of commands that you should run after cloning the project so here we'll take the name of the folder which will be home dreamer client so we will put it in here home dreamer client like that then our name github username essentially this will remove the origin from being my original fast forward dev github repository and then we'll replace it with our new github repository like that and then we do the exact same for the server and just like that, now we have set up the two projects. So now we can install all the node modules and then we can try to run the project and see the boilerplate. So now that the boilerplate is up and running, we can now start customizing the page so it fits the design we created in Figma. But before we start coding the website, let's look at step three. Let's figure out what should be in the database. So what I did to figure this out, I went to OMDB API and uh, this is the API I'm going to use for the different movies. And um, here I tried looking at the data that you'll get from doing a simple API search. And um, here I see the title, the year, the genres, the director, the plot and the IMDB rating. So I have decided that these are the most important things to include in the database, the name of the movie, the year, the genre, the director, the plot, the poster URL, the IMDb rating, and then the movie URL. So let's set up MongoDB. So go to MongoDB and I will sign up using Google. 
just like that. And uh, now I'm going to create a new project within MongoDB. Go to the projects folder right here and then press new project. And I am going to call this home streamer. Press, press next and create project like this. And now we can create a cluster. Create and we'll just choose the free plan. And I will choose a location close to me. Now I'll just press create deployment. So here we have the username and the password. This can be changed in the future. So I'll just go with this for now, like this. So now what you wanna do is go to the connection method. And when the cluster is done with the provisioning thing, it will give you the MongoDB connection URL. If you did not get recommended a password and username for the user, you can just go to the database access tab on the left hand side, and then you can add a new database user and tab in the username and the password and then you can use that. Now that my cluster is ready, I can go to connect right here and press the driver and then I'll copy this whole URL as you see right here. Go into the .env file and then we paste connection URL and we substitute this with the actual database password. After that, we will go into MongoDB again then we will go into the overview. Then we will go to the add data. If you do not see the add data, you can press the browse collection. Then we create a database. In this case, we call it home streamer. And we can create a test collection called user. Then we create the database. So now we have the home streamer database. And we can go back to the environment variable and change this with home streamer. So now if we go to our terminal and we try to run the server and wait for a few seconds, we can see that MongoDB database connection established successfully. So given that uh, this is my startup, the boilerplate project, I'll not be able to show too much code, but I'll try to note down how much time I spent on each task. So I can give you an overview of how easy it actually is to set up this project using my startup. So given that we now know how and what information we are going to store in the database, the movies I'm going to use is just my old YouTube videos and I have just called them the names of the movies and we'll just take the name of the file and then that will be sent along to the API. And uh, I'm going to start the timer to map out how long it takes for me to build this design. So here it starts. First thing I will do is actually store the information about the movies in the database. What you just saw is that now I have the movies in the database with the directors right here and the name, the post or URL and so on. So now we can go on to actually create the front end for the website. And this took around 20 minutes, so let's move on. I will give you a sneak peek into my boilerplate project. So when you get the project, you will have this main page where you will have the header, which is the navigation bar, the hero section, the pros and cons, pricing, the frequently asked questions, call to action, and then a footer. And for this project, we only need to include the hero section because we just have the website with the landing page like this and the navigation bar as well. So when we go to the page, now this is the only thing we see. So now I got the video to play in the background and now I'll just lay out all the design for according to the Figma design I created. This is what I have for now. The background video running and the, the name of the video and the watch now and learn more button. So I'm going to show you the API endpoint which streams the movie or the video to the main page. So this is the main page and as you can see it streams the video but in Next.js you cannot just in the front end access files on your computer. So I create an API endpoint for streaming the videos direct. As you can see right here this is the API endpoint. So some of you might think okay but now I will just be able to watch the movie by going to this endpoint. And I already thought about that because inside the endpoint, I will show you, I have made this check right here. And this check makes sure that only requests from my local host can access this API endpoint. And this makes sure that nobody can bypass the login feature that I'm going to implement now. So as you can see right now, I have generated a sign up token on the backend. And this is very easy because I already have all the functionalities inside my server boilerplate project. And usually how it works is that the sign up token will be sent to the users buying the different things in an email. But uh, this time I just needed the sign up token so I could manually create an account for myself. And now I will sign up. Boom. And now I'm logged in as you can see right here. 
So moving on, on this page, you will be able to scroll down and then in the bottom, it will just allow the users to play the video. So now I finished the single movie page. What I'm going to do next is build the multiple movies page. So the list of all the movies that I have in the database. So now I finished the multiple movies page and I only spent 10 minutes fixing that page. And uh, that's because I have this very easy setup where I can just easily add a new endpoint to the back end, which finds all the movies and then return it. And it's very easy on your front end to just call this endpoint and get all the movie information. When you go to the movies page now, this is what you see, a list of all the movies I have right now. So before moving on, let me explain to you how this structure between the front end and back end actually works. We have a front end right here, okay? The front end runs on the clients and the user's local computer. And for that, I'm using Next.js. So this is the front end part of the boilerplate project. But we also have a server part of the project, which is the backend. And the backend uses Node.js and Express. So how the full stack templating project works is that we have the front end and this front end sends requests to the backend. I want to log in. Then the backend responds with a token. This token is then stored on the front end. Let's say our front end wants to get all the movies. So it sends a request to the backend and it sends along the cookie. So it sends the JWT token and the request, which ensures that our user is logged in and allows them to actually request this endpoint. Then our backend sends a request to the database and it says, oh, we want all movies. Then the database sends back a list of all movies like this. Our backend handles this and responds back to the front end, which will then render all the movies as cards on our web page. This is essentially the setup of the whole boilerplate project. We have a separate project for the front end, a separate for the back end, and then the back end communicates with our database. The reason for choosing this setup is because having the front end and the back end separated makes it a lot easier to scale these two things individually and it also creates plenty of opportunity to switching out one of these things so that is the reason for setting up the boilerplate project in this way and this allows me for faster development because when i want to create a new endpoint from the template that i have already i can easily create a new endpoint which i can request from the front end because all of this token sending and everything is already done so it's very easy to create a new endpoint and request it and use the data that you get back so now I'll implement the recommender side. So now the recommender page is done. Right now it just shows all the movies I have. I only have three movies. But in the future, if I add more, of course, it should be able to just spit out random movies. And if I go to a single movie, let's say I want to see Inception right here, then it goes to the Inception page. So now we only need to create the last page, which I talked about earlier, which should just scroll down to this part of this page, and then you'll be able to stream the video from there. So now the entire page is done. Let me walk you through it. This is the landing page and on the landing page you can see the initial movie that you get uh, recommended right here. Then you can press learn more and if you're not logged in, the login screen will be shown right here. So let me just log in like this. Now you can see I am logged in and I can go to the watch now or learn more page. If I press watch now, it will go to the page. And as you can see, I can tr press play and it will scroll down to the video and I can play the video from the browser right here. I can also go to the recommender page, which will show the three movies that I have right now. Let me just press the interstellar one. Then I can see the name, the plot and the I'm the B rating for now and the post and the posters in the background as well. And you can go to the movie page as well. Movies page right here. And when you go from this page, you can go to either of the movies as well so yeah that's the full walkthrough so looking at the times that i spent the total time i spent on the project is three hours and 20 minutes and that's including setting up the full project uploading the videos creating a, an account creating login everything because it's just straight out of the box in the boilerplate project so this was me rebuilding my first full stack project using my new startup and i just wanted to showcase that using my startup it has become very easy for me to create new projects in one of my next videos as well i will talk about a new startup i created using this boilerplate 
other played project. This startup is called Catch Up Slack and it is a Slack bot which enables users to summarize all the messages in every single channel using AI. And I used my boilerplate project to create this startup so it took me only three days to complete it. So stay tuned for the upcoming videos. I hope you like watching me rebuild my first full stack project. Let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions for startups or projects that I should build in the future. And without more to say, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.